Okay, the last approach we're going to do for adjustment is to use inverse probability weighting instead of just matching. Um, the advantage of this, as you saw in the lecture, is that we don't have to throw away data. Um, with the match data, we got rid of like 600 rows. Um, it would be nice if we could use those rows um, and kind of get a more accurate estimate without throwing everything away. But what we want to do is weight each of the rows based on how weird they are. Um, so we're kind of matching. Um, but what we're going to do is a couple steps. We're going to generate predicted probabilities for each row. So we're going to model how uh, we're going to predict each row if, they're, if they should be using a net based on the different confounders. And then we'll use that propensity score that we generate, or the predicted probability, to generate an inverse probability weight, which is that weirdness score. So higher weights will be observations that should be using a net but aren't or that are using a net that shouldn't. Um, and so if it has a low score, it means it was predicted to use a net and they are using a net, or they were predicted to not use a net and they're not using a net. So ultimately, we're going to use that weirdness score, and then we'll use that weirdness score, the inverse probability weight, as weights in a regression just like this, um, with the matched regression, and we should get a causal estimate in our regression coefficients. So we'll make a new section here called inverse probability weighting. Okay, so the first step is to generate propensity scores. Scores. So these propensity scores are just the, the probability that a row is going to use a mosquito net based on whatever covariates we want to include. And what we want to include are the things in our DAG because those are our confounders. So we want to predict why people are using nets based on nighttime temperatures, income, and health. We don't need any of the other nodes. We're just going to use those three to predict net usage. Okay, so to do that, we need to build a model. So we will name this chunk here called make p scores. So what we want to do is build a model um, using logistic regression to predict um, if people are using nets or not. So we're gonna make a model here called model net. This has nothing to do with the effect of the nets on risk, um, on malaria risk. This is just predicting if people are using nets or not. So the function for this is gonna be GLM, which stands for generalized linear model instead of regular linear model. And this is how we can run logistic regression. So it uses the same formula syntax that we're familiar with, with regular regression. So we're gonna say net is explained by income plus temperature plus health. And the data that we're looking at, we're not going to use the matched data. Um, we're ignoring the matched stuff now. We're just going to use the original nets data. The last thing we need to add to make sure that this is logistic regression is we have to tell it to be logistic regression. We do that with the family argument. We say family equals binomial meaning there's only two um, outcomes, yes or no. And then the link equals logit. Um, the only way you can like do that is just to either memorize it, which I have because I've been doing this for a while. But before I had it memorized, I would just copy and paste from previous logistic regressions um, because that's just how you learn is copying and pasting. Um, so this is the, the incantation you use here to tell it to do logistic regression. Um, and then we want to see the results just for fun. So we'll say tidy model net. Um, so if we run this now, here's our logistic regression. Um, all of these coefficients are pretty uninterpretable because they're log odds. Um, they don't make sense. But we can unlog them by exponentiating them. So that means we take e to the power of negative 0.05, and it'll tell us the odds ratio. Um, we don't have to do that manually. We can actually just, in tidy, we can say exponentiate equals true. And if we run that, there we go. So there's there's no huge effects here. Um, again, remember this is based around one. So any changes above one or under one change the, the likelihood of using a net. So according to this, um, as temperature increases, um, you are, by one degree, you're 6% less likely to use a net. Um, so if temperature goes up by another percent, then you're 6% more, or 6% less likely to use a net. 
and it's 6% because that's 100 minus or 1 minus 0.94. Um, these things are above. So like as your income increases, you are 0.2% more likely to use a net, which is not huge, but also income is measured in dollars. So if income goes up by like $100, then you're going to be more likely to use a net. And if health goes up by some, instead of just one unit, like 10 units, then you'll be more likely to use a net. So that's what that's showing. But we don't care about that. Um, if you're doing this in real life, you'd probably want to make sure that this is doing a fairly good job at predicting net usage. Um, here, because it's simulated data and fake, we can assume that it's, it's doing a good job at predicting. Um, so the next step is we want to generate the actual propensity score. So we're going to, we have a model now. We're going to take our data set and plug every value of income, temperature, and health into the model, and it will spit out a propensity or a predicted probability of using a net based on income, temperature, and health. So to do that, we're going to make a new data set called model, or uh, we're going to call it nets, IPW, because this is with the inverse probability weights in it. And we're going to base this on, or there's a, there's a function called augment. This will take our model and then plug in um, our data set and then generate the propensity scores, um, which is neat. The, the one issue with using augment is that it will throw away any columns that you don't use in the model. So like eligibility will disappear. Um, what else is in here? Um, number of people in the household will disappear. So if we don't care about those, we can just use augment, that's fine. But if we do care about those and we wanna keep them, um, then the function we can use is augment underscore columns, and this will add things. Um, so we're gonna take our model that we called model net and we're going to take our mosquito nets data set, our nets here. And then the last argument is we want to tell it what to do. We want type predict equals response. That just means that it's going to scale down the predictions into probabilities. If we don't do that, it'll scale it down into odds or into log odds, which again, don't make sense. They're not interpretable. Um, but if we say type, equal, type predict equals response, it'll convert those into a zero to one probability score. Um, so if we run this now and we look at Nets IPW, we have all of our existing columns. Um, we have um, even the ones we didn't use, like household and eligible. Um, but if we keep scrolling over, we have all of these new columns. Um, the one we care about the most here is this one called dot fitted. This is our predicted probability column. Um, this is our propensity score. And so we can sort by this. We can say this person here, only has a 10% chance of using a net, um, given their income and temperature and health. And they used a net. So already that's probably a weird observation. They're gonna have a high inverse probability score. And if we reverse it, we can see the people who are most likely to use nets. So this person has a 74% chance of using a net based on the confounders we, we used. And they used a net. So they followed what was predicted. Um, these other columns um, are just kind of the standard error around the fitted value, um, other errors, other diagnostics that you can look at. Um, all we really care about is this fitted value. That's our propensity score. And for the sake of um, remembering that that is the propensity score, we can actually rename this because dot fitted is not super clear. Um, so to rename that column, we can actually just add this pipe symbol, um, which is command shift M or control shift M on Windows. And we can say rename, and we'll uh, we say propensity equals dot fitted. So we're going to take that dot fitted column and rename it to propensity. So now if we run it, and we look at Nets IPW, and scroll over, this is no longer called dot fitted. It's now called propensity, which is nicer. So we'll do that. Okay. The last thing we want to do is generate our inverse probability weight. Um, value. Remember, this is the weirdness column. Um, this measures how how unpredictable different rows are. So that 74% chance, where was it? This person here that had a 74% chance of using a net. Um, this person here, they were supposed to use a net according to the model. And if you scroll over, they did. 
that's not very weird. That's not very unexpected. Um, if we sort it back to the lowest, though, this person here that had a 10% chance, they did use a net. That's kind of weird and unexpected, so they're going to be weighted more importantly. So we need to generate that weight. So to do that, we're going to add a new column, which involves the, mu the mutate function. So we'll say mutate. We'll make a new column here just called IPW. You can name it whatever you want. You could name it weights. You could name it inverse probability weights. You could name it weirdness score, whatever you want. We're going to say equals. So the formula we want to use, if you remember from the lecture, um, was, um, let me pull up the lecture so you can actually see it here. This is what we care about here. It is treatment over propensity. So we should have a column in there for treatment, and it's numeric, so it's going to be 1 or 0 if they used a net or not. And then propensity is our propensity score, that probability. Um, and then so we're going to say treatment over propensity plus 1 minus treatment over 1 minus propensity. So that's the thing we need. Um, so let's move this off to the side and look at that as we build this thing. So it's, and we'll use parentheses to make sure order of operations works. So we want our treatment column, which is the numeric nets thing, which we called net underscore num. There we go. So we'll say net underscore num divided by propensity. So that's the first part of our formula. So that's our treatment over propensity. And then we want plus, and then some extra parentheses for order of operations purposes, 1 minus net num divided by 1 minus propensity. And that should be enough parentheses. Yep. Um, I'm using the RStudio preview that was just released um, recently. Um, which lets you do these rainbow parentheses if you go into the settings, um, which is really nice because you can see like this green parenthesis matches up with that green one. This pink one matches up with that one. It helps with parentheses counting, which is helpful. Um, so if we run this now, let's see if it worked. And we look at Nets IPW. We should have a new column here called IPW. Um, so this is, again, the weirdness score. So if we sort it, this is, these are the most boring people. So this 1.13, um, this person, their propensity, they had a 12% chance of using a net, and they didn't. And a 14% chance of using a net, and they didn't. So these are the boring people. If we sort it the other way, 9. So this person had a 10% chance, but they did it. So there's our, our, our true exception here. So they have a really high inverse probability weight. But everybody else here, like these sixes here, if we scroll over, their propensity was like 15%, and they did it. I wonder if there are any high people. Um, these are all, pretty much these are all net users. Oh, there's somebody. Row 109 there. They did not use a net. They had a probability of 70% of using a net, but then they didn't. And so their inverse probability score is high, like 3.4-ish. Cool. So that now we have that column with weights that um, gives more importance to the observations that kind of don't follow expectations. Um, and so that's kind of a different way of matching these observations. We don't have to throw anything away. We're just going to give more importance to some of the observations. So we now have data we can work with. So we'll do the estimation here. So we will come and make a new section here called find effect. And we will add a new chunk here, and we'll call it IPW model. Um, the nice thing is that it follows the same syntax as before. So if we come up to our weighting um, formula here, we can just copy this. So it's going to be LM, malaria risk is explained by net. Um, we're going to use weights, and we're going to use a data set. We're going to change some of these things because we're not using matched data. So I'll just copy that, come down to the bottom. So we're going to make a new object called model underscore IPW, and we're going to set that equal to this. Um, so malaria risk is explained by net usage. The data, though, we're not using matched data. We're using nets underscore IPW. That's our inverse probability weighted or that's our data set that has the inverse probability weights in it.
That's this data set here with our IPW column. Um, so we're going to use nets IPW. The weight column is no longer named weights. We named it IPW. So IPW. The indentation is off, so I'll just select these rows, press Command I, make everything nicely indented. And then we want to see the results here, so we'll say tidy model IPW. So if I run this now, the causal effect is negative 10, um, 0.1. So that is a lot more accurate than the negative 16 that we found with just the observational data without any adjustments. It's fairly close to the matched version. Um, and so that, that's good. This is a plausible causal effect that we have now. You could report this in a paper um, and say, this is our estimate of the true causal effect using observational data. And the reason you can legally, you can legally claim causality now, instead of just saying this is correlated with or associated with, is because we followed the DAG. Um, we adjusted for income and temperatures and health. We made those adjustments by incorporating these into our propensity score um, calculations. And that was one way of making these adjustments. And then all we're left with is net the effect of net on malaria. And there's our causal effect of negative 10. Um, so we want to just compare all of these models all at once at the end, just to see kind of which ones work good and work, work well and which ones don't. So we'll make a new heading here called all models. Um, so we're going to use the model summary package that you did in problem set two. So just for good practice, it's good to have all of your packages be up at the top so you can know things you need to install. So we're going to say library model summary. And we'll run that so it actually loads it. So we're going to insert a new chunk here. We're going to name the chunk all models together. Yay. Um, we're going to use the model summary package. And the way this works is we just give it a list of models to show all at once simultaneously. So we'll use the list function to create a list. And we want to feed it all of the models we've made. So if we scroll up, we can find out what those are called. We have one called model wrong. We'll include that one in there. So model wrong was one of them. And then comma. We also had model matched. Paste. We also had model matched weights. Um, and we had model IPW. So there's our four models that we're going to show all at once. If I just click on play, it should show them down below like that. So the way you read this is it's now uh, vertical. So each of these models is a column. Um, this is the intercept for each of the models, 41, 38, 36, 39. Um, this number down here is the standard error. It's um, the same as, so there's our 0.46 for the intercept for the last model. It should show 0.46 right there. So that, that's what that number is coming from. Um, the one we care about the most is this net true idea. This right here is the ostensible causal effect of using a net. Um, so if we look at this, this is our naive one, the model one that was wrong. Um, that was 16. It doesn't have that big of an effect. This is the matched version. It was negative 12. This is the matched with weights, and it was negative 10.4. And this is the inverse probability weighting, negative 10. Um, in this case, the inverse probability weighting version was the most accurate. The real true causal effect um, is negative 10. That's what I built into the data. So this gets the closest. That is not true in all situations. It's not that inverse probability weighting will always get you the right effect. And um, like this is not kind of increasing in, in accuracy. It is, in this case, never do this one. This one's bad. And um, we didn't do any adjustments there. Um, but yeah, that's how we do it. If we want to be a little bit more official and cool with our model summary, we can give names to these so instead of saying model one, model two, model three. Um, here in the list, we can say model, like we can actually give it a name. We can say naive equals model wrong. Matched equals model matched. Matched plus weights equals model matched weights, and IPW equals that. So now if we run it, our column headings should be much nicer.
So there's our, na our naive model, matched, matched plus weights, and inverse probability weighting. So that is how you can use R to make adjustments based on a causal diagram using um, Daggety here. It says we need to adjust for these things. This is how we actually make the adjustments using matching and inverse probability weighting. And it's all here in one R markdown file that we can knit and we can email this to people. And here's our final report, um, finding the causal effect of using a mosquito net on malaria risk using observational data.